A ball of mass M is attached to a string of length R and of negligible mass, the string being of negligible mass. The ball moves clockwise in a vertical circle as shown here. When the ball is at point P, the string is horizontal, so it'll look like that. And point Q is at the bottom of the circle and point Z is at the top of the circle. Of course, at this level of physics, air resistance is negligible. Express all algebraic answers in terms of the given quantities and fundamental constants, and here are our three things we're being asked for. The first is an expression for V min, the minimum speed that the ball can have at this point without leaving the circular path or without falling out of the circle, if you will. The maximum tension the string can have without breaking is T max, so given that, we must derive an expression for V max, the maximum speed you can have at point Q without snapping the string. And finally, once you've got those two, we will suppose that the string is allowed to break at the instant the ball is here at point P. We'll describe the motion of the ball immediately after the, spring the string breaks, and that'll probably be the simplest problem. Okay, let's begin with part A. Let's derive an expression for the minimum speed the ball will have here at point Z without leaving the circular path. This being a dynamics problem, let's go ahead and look at that thing and consider all of the forces that could be in play at that point, okay? So if I were to draw a free body diagram on the ball here, I would have one obvious force that is usually present in these problems, the one pointing down referred to as the force of gravity. We'll call it mass times gravity mg, where m is the capital M that I was introduced to in the problem. Yeah, but the thing is, there's another force pulling us down if the uh, ball is in a vertical circle such as this, okay? And we would call that the force of tension in the string, okay? Usually when you whirl a ball in such a manner, uh, there it, you'll be able to detect some, some force, some tension in the string at all points in the circle, okay? Unless you're going slow enough, hint, hint. Now, that's it. There's no upward force, there's no nothing, and altogether, these two forces must add up to the net force. All right, let's go ahead and make an equation with this information. Let's say that the sum of all forces, or the net force, is equal to mg plus tension in general. At all times, we can say that that's the case. And here I'm taking the convention that the downward direction is positive because I might as well. There's no forces going up, so I might as well make everything in play be positive. Now, Newton's second law. I can substitute for the net force MA. So MA equals MG plus T. But wait, at the end of the day, our acceleration is said to be circular. So really, we're talking MAC. The type of acceleration we have is centripetal. And a little bit more detail on that, we can use the definition of centripetal force and talk V squared over R. So mv squared over r equals mg plus t. Now, back to the specifics of this problem. That'll work in general for any of these points. But here in part A, we want the minimum speed the ball can have at point z without leaving the circular path. Now, I'm hoping that you have played around with this sort of thing at some point in your childhood, and you can sort of imagine what's going on here. What happens if you swing the thing around your head too slowly? Well, you'd expect the ball to sort of fall and bop you on the head if you're going too slow, okay? If you're going fast, then you can sense that tension in the string that's keeping this thing in circular motion. Well, what if you didn't have that tension? Or rather, what if you didn't need it? What if we were going just slow enough that gravity itself could provide the necessary centripetal force and there was no risk of it falling out of the circle that way? Well, then we would be talking a situation where we don't need any tension. And so, specific to this problem, we're going to zero it out. And here we find the 
form of the equation mv squared over r is equal to mg. We have m's in the same place on both sides of the equation, which we may cancel. And we may cross multiply over, multiply this r over here to say that v squared is equal to gr, and we get the classic result by taking the square root of both sides. v, at this point we can specify v min, the velocity we've been asked for, square root gr. A very classic result, and a very classic setup for a centripetal motion problem. In part B, we flip the script. The maximum tension the string can have without breaking is T max. Descri derive an expression for V max, the maximum speed the ball can have at point Q, the bottom, without breaking the string. Now, just as I did before, let's make a general setup for all problems of this type. Free body diagram time. As usual, I expect that pointing me down will be my familiar mg, force of gravity. This time, however, clearly the string is aligned the other way, and relative to the ball's position, the string is pulling me up towards the center of the circle with a force we'll call T for tension. That is it, though. All together, these must make up the net force. This time, my sign convention is going to be important, but I'll go ahead and keep the down direction positive as I did last time. Now, the sum of all forces should be mg minus t. Now, minus t is pretty important now, okay, guys? Now, remember, Newton's second law, okay? Sigma f is, equ is equal to ma. Now, ma is equal to mg minus t. Okay, but hold on a second. Let's think about it. Just like last time, we are going to say mac, okay? So I am going to go ahead and make the substitution, again, just like last time for centripetal acceleration, v squared over r. But there's something pretty important I'm going to have to do. What direction does centripetal acceleration go? towards the center of the circle. And what direction is the center of the circle relative to where I am now? It's in the negative direction. You could have said that the upward direction is positive, but what matters here is that the tension and the centripetal force, the sum of all forces, agree in sign, whereas the force of gravity is going in a different direction. That is very, very important and frequently missed. But now let's get specific, okay? V is going to be the thing we're interested in. This time, T is known to be at a maximum. Now, you can probably feel this. Remember I talked about your imagination when you're swinging something around like this? You can probably feel a certain heaviness at the bottom of our circle, okay? That's because the tension is doing double duty. It's both maintaining centripetal acceleration and bearing the weight of your mass, so that T that we're talking about here, that is the T max in the situation we've described and we're about to solve for V max. I think this time I will multiply over an R. Uh, negative M V squared will be equal to R. I have MG minus T max. I'm going to divide by, uh, let's divide by negative M. So V squared will be equal to R mg minus T max over negative M, to get V squared by itself. And that looks a little bit strange. Um, I think what I'm going to do is sort of address this negative sign here, move it up here, then redistribute it. Okay, that's going to swap the order of these. So watch this. We have R, um, then it's going to be T max minus mg over m. And then finally, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So v max, the one I've been looking for, is the square root of r over m. We could say t max minus mg. As usual, there's a handful of different forms of that, but I'm not too interested in uh, going any further since I have all the common factors and such.
factor it out. So that's where I'm going to end that particular problem. Finally, we move on to the easiest part of this problem. Suppose that the string breaks at the instant the ball is at point P, snap. Describe the motion of the ball immediately after the string breaks. So a nice qualitative problem after we've done the quantitative part. Well, this thing must continue on a path tangential to its original circular motion. So simply put, you would expect to see that the ball would travel up and then immediately back down in a straight line under the usual uh, force of gravity uh, with plenty of kinematic uh, methods to describe things like the time it takes to hit the ground, the acceleration, the final velocity before hitting the ground, etc. But this is not a kinematics problem. In so describing it and putting it to paper, which I will not bother doing, uh, you have answered this question sufficiently.